First of all, I'm going to go over with the electric file. I find this easier on myself, definitely. Doing some of the filing work with an electric file is a massive help. I'm taking off any bulk, but I'm also contouring the nail at the same time. So I'm looking down the barrel of the nail while I do this as well, checking the side profile and also the shape from the top view. And then I'm going to hand file. Doing my normal filing routine of doing the side walls first, getting them nice and straight, coming straight out of the natural side wall. Then I'll do the cuticle area. Getting that nice and flush so we don't have a lip. You don't want a lip at the end. I don't mean like a look or like a look like that, no. Like a ridge, you know, a step or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do the end, so that free edge shape. It'll contour all of the surface as well with the hand file. And you can see how I actually move my hand and not really, don't really move this much. I get used to sort of rotating my hand as well rather than the hand that's actually filing. Do you do that with clients' hands as well or? Definitely don't do that with clients' hands. <laughs> it could be a little bit hard. Like just moving the finger just like I do, yeah, I do move the finger a certain, you know, I do, but I, I don't have as much movement as... Yeah, you don't have as much control. Yeah, I just move my hand far more than I would a client. But I do rotate the finger. If I'd do that on a client, I'd move the finger like that. Yeah. Whereas with this, I can sort of move my hand wherever I want. So you can see that I've got an apex here. Coming up in the back third and it's nice and flat and straight. Straight side walls, flat top. Nice and flush at the cuticle. I'm going to go over with a white block now. Just to make it even more smoother. So we'll go through the centre and then I'll go down the sides. And then wipe the surface of that nail with acetone. And that's going to smooth it all and clean it all at the same time. So I'm going to continue that on all of the nails. Now they've been filed and smoothed out with the white block, I've wiped over with acetone. We're ready to put any nail art on or mega gloss. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of art on there, freehand art with a little bit of white paint, just because I know that'll contrast really nicely. I'm going to do some really random lines I'm going to do the same on this one I'm going to do a little bit on the thumb when you put the mega gloss on top this will be enhanced even more as well I'm going to mega gloss these now
gonna bring out all the sparkle. I'm going to do the thumb first because I want to cure that because as soon as I start to move my hands around it'll slide and fall and I don't want that to happen. I want it to be all nice. I don't need to completely cure it. I can flash cure that for around 10 seconds and I know it's not going to move anywhere. And then I can paint the rest. So the new chromes that we've got now, you can apply them straight on the top of Mega Gloss. It doesn't need to go on to a soft gel. It can go on to Mega Gloss and it'll stick to it. I'll show you that in a minute. As soon as I've cured these, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cure them. So we're gonna use the Mirror Chrome. So we're gonna rub all of that into the nail. So what you'll find is that the mirror takes on the colour of what's underneath. So it gives it more of a rose gold effect. So the more that you rub it, the shinier it's going to go. I'm going to do exactly the same again with this nail. So you don't need to cover the nail, you just need to cover the free edge. I'm going to get a dry lint free pad and wipe over and this is going to remove any of those glittery particles and make it even smoother. Now with this nail we can go all over the nail. So I do have people say to me, have you got any of that rose gold chrome powder? And I'm like, no, that's not done like that. This is how it's done. You put the pink underneath, then you put the chrome over the top and it changes it into rose gold. So I'm gonna cure that nail before I do the other one because I don't want it to move. And when we do the next one, it needs to be perfect. We need to do the smile line and everything like that. With this one, I'm going to take the Mega Gloss and go up to the smile line. So I can see where the smile line is because it's a different colour. So on the natural beige part, it's silver. And on the free edge colour, it looks rose gold. Right, going for it. So once it's out of the lamp, we're going to use gel residue wipe off solution to clean off the pigment from the nail bed. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash my hands. Just so it's not so sparkly anymore. <laughs> the next stage is I'm going to add some crystals, but I'm also going to add a 3D bow. So I've got Fantastic Fuchsia and I've also got High Speed in my dampen dish. So we're going to make a 3D bow. It's not just going to be any old bow. We're going to make it chrome. So it's going to be this rose gold chrome. So high speed sets up quicker, so you can just sort of work on one bead at a time. I'm going to press that out, and I'm going to make that into a diamond shape. It's quite a soft diamond shape. It doesn't need to be like, it doesn't need to have perfectly straight sides. That's what they meant. Now depending how long you want the bow, it will depend how long that this diamond shape is. If you want a really long sort of loop to the bow, you would make this bit a little bit longer. But I don't want it to be super huge. And then I'm going to fold that over and just touch it there so it sticks. Give it a little bit of a dent here to create some movement. So 
to make it a bit more realistic. And we're going to do another one. The hard bit is getting them both the same size. But to be honest, with those, are they always symmetrical? No. Now we're going to take the first one. Ah, right, a little bead, little tie bead. That's just going to join them together. This isn't the knot in the middle or the fold. And let that bead just sort of stick them together because they want to be together. Now, with a small bead, we're going to do the detail for the middle. So, this is what we do. We make like a little sausage, a little pink sausage, and then we press it. Now, I like to pull it back together this way, and then with the brush, make it thinner in the middle. And then you'll have more bulk of the product at the sides. It needs to be long enough to go over here. Now the back side of this, so the, the area of this acrylic that is touching the backing paper will be sticky still. So when I pick this up and place it here, it will stick to the bow. So if, you, if you watch what side I use, so I'm skipping it off and then rolling it on. Tucking that side under and then tucking that side over there. So you can see that that's giving you the detail in the middle. Hold the bow, take the mega gloss, open the mega gloss, paint the bow with the mega gloss. <laughs> Make sure all of the bow is painted with the mega gloss. Make sure you do this as thin as you can. So what I mean by that is apply the mega gloss as thin as you can. You need to get into those nooks and crannies. You need to get in here as well. So in those loops of the bow, you want to go around the sides. Don't forget about the sides. So anything that is visible on application needs to be covered with mega gloss. Now, obviously, I'm holding this here, so I can't do that bit. I have to do that bit in a moment. So make sure it's all got mega gloss on it. I'm going to cure that. I'm going to take the tweezers out now and hold that side. Actually, I'm going to move around here. So the part that was holding the tweezers has no mega gloss on. So we're going to put some mega gloss into that little loop. Once that's cured, I'm just going to try something. I've not done this before. We're going to get the bow and we're going to give it a chrome bath. I'm going to dip it all in. All right, I'm going to tap off the excess. Oh my God, it looks nice like that. But we will give it a rub with the applicator. The reason that I wanted to try that is because I thought, well, it'll get in all the nooks and crannies and all the, you know, all those bits that maybe an applicator won't get into. Oh my God, it's so amazing. Oh my God, I dropped it with excitement. I'm loving it already. Aham, aham, aham. I am gonna have to get a brush just to brush off here where the sort of loose pigment is sitting. So we have a rose gold 
chrome bow. We can't just leave it like that though, can we? I'm going to get some mega gloss, I'm going to put it onto the backing paper. And then I'm going to get a gel brush. I'm going to use the gel brush to brush on the mega gloss rather than the brush out the bottle. This will just get in a little bit neater. And I'll even get right into those folds of the bow. It is made. We now need to attach it, attach it to the nail. I am going to put it on the full chrome nail. I did think about putting it on this nail. Tell you what guys, comment below which nail you think the bow looks better on. Does it look better on the full, the full chrome one? Or does it look better on the one with the smile line? I don't, don't, I don't want your opinion. Don't you start. Did you even eat? I just actually, knew. Did you I knew. My mouth I knew water. what you were gonna. You were gonna say. Ain't like this better with the one the smile line. I wasn't actually gonna say. That. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say it looks more girly on the one on the smile line. You know why? Why? Because obviously the smile line it looks sort of like a face shape, and that's like a bow at the top. Do you understand what I mean? Ah, so you can put eyes, and there's like a yeah. bow here. Yeah, I think it looks better here. My opinion. And your opinion wins. Yes, every time. Um, so yeah, I do want to know what you think though. If you think it looks better on the other one, or if even if you think it looks better on a totally different nail. Clear acrylic. A bead of clear acrylic just there. Exactly where we're gonna put it. Pick up the bow, place it into the bead. We're using a fast set. And then I'm making sure I hide any of the acrylic that you can see, any of that clear. And then what I will do, I will fill here. To give that bow support. I know you're probably thinking that makes it look ugly, but I need it to stay on. And if you have a better way of doing it or a better idea, please tell me. I am all ears. Now, bit of bling. So I've got a selection of crystals here. I'm gonna put them on with acrylic. Large bead of acrylic for this large stone and I'm going to put a bead of acrylic here so as I was putting them on I've decided that they actually only need that one nail with a little bit of bling on because you've got all this bling sort of set inside as well and I don't want to take away from that so what I'm gonna do with this now is put a little bit of brush on glue, which will help to secure those on. And what it also does is hide any of the acrylic because it gives it a bit of a shine. I'm gonna use some vanilla co coconut, vanilla coconut, oh, that'd be <laughs> nice. I'm gonna use some vanilla cuticle oil on the nails. It does smell very nice. So there you are guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. I wanna show you one more thing before you go. The whole inspiration, obviously the glitter lips and everything like that, but the inspiration behind the nails is this beautiful bag. It's a beautiful Steve Madden bag. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it? Just look at the matchy, 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 matchy. So this is my new bag and I absolutely love it. So that's why we chose these colors today. So I can go out and have my beautiful bag and my beautiful nails and be all matchy, matchy. 
Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the description box below for all of the products that we've used today. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, guys. I love you so much, bye. <laughs>